everyone. In this video, we're going to look at aromatic compounds that have a non-carbon atom. So maybe they have a nitrogen or an oxygen or a sulfur atom in place of one of the carbons. And we're just going to look at um, lone pairs in particular. So we want to try to figure out our lone pair electrons counted as pi electrons. Um, or not, and that will help us determine if something is aromatic or not. Okay, so let's look at one example here, and this molecule might be familiar. Okay, so this is pyridine, which we've used in some of our reagents before, and we want to try to figure out um, how many pi electrons this molecule has. And that will help us determine if it's aromatic or anti-aromatic or non-aromatic. Now, the real question here, because we know that if you have a double bond, you have pi electrons in the double bond. But what about this lone pair of electrons? Does that count as pi electrons? Well, let's draw a um, slightly different picture here. So I'm gonna put nitrogen off to the side. So I'm just kind of rotating our molecule slightly. Oh, <laughs> I'm drawing it a little crooked. Let me uh, try that again. hard to draw in three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, there we go, okay. Um, so the carbons that are in the ring, let's figure out what the hybridization of those carbons uh, is. So uh, the carbon that I just drew an arrow to on pyridine, is that sp, sp2, or sp3 hybridized? sp2 hybridized, right? Because uh, it's bonded to two other carbons and a hydrogen that we're not showing. Um, so that's a steric number of three. So that means it's sp2 hybridized. But that also means that it has a p orbital that's hanging out above and below. So that's true for all of the carbons in the ring. They all have p orbitals. Okay, what about our nitrogen? What is the hybridization of that nitrogen? Is it sp, sp2, or sp3 hybridized? Well, it's bonded to two carbons and it has a lone pair. So that's a total of three. So it has a steric number of three. So it is also sp2 hybridized. So that means it has a p orbital as well, just kind of hanging out. Now looking at our original drawing of pyridine, uh, we know that nitrogen has a double bond with its neighboring carbon. So we'll just draw kind of a double bond going across the p orbitals there. And then the next two carbons have a double bond, and then the next two have a double bond as well. Okay, so where is that lone pair of electrons? Is it in a p orbital? It's actually in an sp2 orbital that's coming off the side there. Now, the carbons around the ring also have an sp2 orbital coming off of the ring, but they're using that to form a bond with a hydrogen atom. And I would draw the other carbons in their hydrogen atoms, but <laughs> it would get kind of complex. So I'll just draw the one carbon and its bond to hydrogen. So that sp2 orbital, um, 
because the lone pair is in an sp2 orbital, we don't count those electrons towards the pi electrons. They're not in a p orbital, so they're not pi electrons. The other way that you can think about this too, um, I'll just redraw pyridine down below real quick. The other question you can ask yourself is, can I draw a resonance structure that includes the lone pair of electrons? So for instance, here, could we move that double or uh, the lone pair of electrons down to form a resonance structure? No, right? That wouldn't work. But we could move all of these p orbital electrons around and draw a resonance structure that way. We just don't use the lone pair to do that. So the lone pair is localized, not delocalized. So that's another way to determine if you can count uh, your lone pair as pi electrons. Okay, so let's look at a situation where the lone pair of electrons can be counted as pi electrons. All right, so this is the molecule parole. And looking at this molecule, um, it looks like all the carbons are also sp2 hybridized, and our nitrogen is bonded to two carbons and a hydrogen. Um, so let's see. But it also has a lone pair. So then the question becomes, is that sp2 or sp3? Now, one other thing to note, though, is that this time we can move our electrons, uh, the lone pair electrons, down to create a resonance structure. So now we do have delocalized electrons there. Oh, I kind of drew my arrow here in a misleading way. Let me draw it slightly differently. It should go on the carbon on the side there. All right, so we've got some resonance structures here. And again, that lone pair of electrons was able to delocalize into the ring. Now, looking at our second resonance structure, what would we say the hybridization of nitrogen is? sp2 it's bonded to two carbons and a hydrogen so its steric number is three and remember we actually would have a hybrid structure here so resonance structures just kind of show us how electrons move um, but in reality those electrons are all delocalized around the ring so nitrogen would be sp2 hybridized Okay, so now the question is, where are those lone pair electrons located? Are they in an sp2 hybrid orbital or are they in a p orbital? So let's just draw that real quick. So I'll draw nitrogen on the side to make it a little easier to see. Okay, so again, if everything in the ring is sp2 hybridized, then everything has a p orbital going above and below. Oh, I drew this a little funky. Let me, let me actually redraw these two carbons here. Give them a little more room. Ah. <laughs> it's kind of a silly drawing there. Okay, it's hard to draw. All right.
right. And um, if we look at our first resonance structure, the carbons have double bonds. Whoa. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and our nitrogen is just kind of hanging out on its own. It does have a bond to hydrogen, though, and that's going to occur with its sp2 hybrid orbital. So that must mean that its lone pair, uh, let me redraw this p orbital, sorry, this is a little confusing, but its lone pair is in a p orbital. So the lone pair of electrons, because they're in a p orbital, they can count as pi electrons. So in some situations, the lone pair on a non-carbon atom will be in, for instance, an sp2 hybrid orbital, and it'll be localized. So the lone pair won't count as pi electrons. But in other scenarios, the lone pair will be in a p orbital, and it can delocalize, so it will be uh, considered pi electrons. Okay, so let's actually figure out how many pi electrons each of these molecules have. Okay, so looking at pyridine, how many pi electrons do we have? Well, we have two, four, six. And we said that for aromatic compounds, they need to be cyclic. So this is cyclic. Uh, they need to have a conjugated pi system. So alternating double and single bonds, which our molecule has. And it needs to be planar, which it is. And then you also need 4n plus 2 electrons. And 6 electrons, or 6 pi electrons, follows the Huckel's rule. 4n plus 2. Oops, sorry. I went back too far. There we go. Uh, what about parole? How many uh, pi electrons do we have? Well, since our lone pair of electrons can delocalize into the ring, that means we have two, four, six as well. Uh, let's see, I'll just write that down below. So looking at parole, we have a cyclic molecule. It's planar and um, we have a conjugated pi system because that lone pair is uh, in a p orbital, so it's technically alternating. We've got uh, one, two, three, so that's alternating. And then um, we have the six pi electrons, which gives us the four n plus two amount of pi electrons. All right, so both of these are, in fact, aromatic. Let's look at another example, and this time we'll look at a molecule that has an oxygen. So this one looks uh, similar to parole, um, but now we've got this question of, okay, we have two lone pairs of electrons on oxygen. Uh, so what is the hybridization of oxygen here? And where are those lone pairs of electrons? Are they in a hybrid orbital, a p orbital? Um, can we even delocalize those electrons? So let's just try to draw a resonance structure. That might be the easiest way to figure out how many pi electrons we have. Okay, so can we move one of those lone pairs of electrons into the ring? Yep, 
Yes. So we could move one of these lone pairs down and one of our um, double bonds can move up onto a carbon. And I'm just drawing one resonance structure here. You could probably draw another one too. Um, but the main idea is just that we do have resonance so we can delocalize the lone pair. All right, so oxygen becomes positively charged in that resonance structure. Um, let's see, so what is the hybridization of oxygen if we look at our second structure there? Is it SP, SP2, or SP3 hybridized? SP2, it's bonded to two carbons and it has one lone pair, so that's a steric number of three. Now this wasn't very obvious when we looked at our first resonance structure, but um, remember that we actually have a hybrid structure, so the electrons are actually delocalized around the ring. So oxygen is in fact sp2 hybridized. Okay, so let's uh, draw kind of a, a side picture. So I'll put oxygen off to the side. I'll try to draw this one better than uh, my previous ones. <laughs> I don't know if I'm succeeding though. Okay, so the other carbons in the ring are also sp2 hybridized. So again, we have p orbitals for each of those carbon atoms as well as oxygen. So because oxygen is sp2 hybridized, that means we have an sp2 orbital coming off of it. The other carbons also have an sp2 orbital coming off, but they are bonding with hydrogen. Now oxygen has two lone pairs. So that must mean one lone pair is in the p orbital and one lone pair is in the sp2 orbital. Okay, so if we look at um, our carbons, let's see, we have a double bond between two carbons next to oxygen, and then these two carbons, and we have pi electrons in that lone, or uh, in that p orbital. But we do not count the electrons that are in the sp2 orbital. those cannot delocalize. So um, only the p orbital electrons can. Okay, so how many pi electrons do we have total in this molecule? Six, we've got the two in between um, the carbon atoms two in between the other carbon atoms, and then two in our p orbital on oxygen. So this would be a total of six pi electrons. Now that follows the 4n plus two rule, so that's good. We also do have a cyclic molecule. It's planar, and it has a conjugated pi system, so alternating pi electrons and single bonds. Awesome, okay, so this is aromatic. So again, just to summarize, I'm just gonna write a little note off to the side. If resonance is possible for a lone pair, then it can be counted as pi electrons. All 
Okay. Let's look at a more challenging molecule now that we kind of have the basics down for how to figure out if a lone pair is uh, pi electrons or not. All right, so we're going to look at a um, molecule called histamine, and this is responsible for uh, allergies. And I have started my allergy season, so <laughs> histamine is definitely uh, doing its job. Uh, okay, so let's draw histamine. Okay, so we've got our ring system, and then we also have an amine coming off of there. And we've got a double bond here, some lone pairs. Okay, so we've got two nitrogens in the ring this time. And let me just write down histidine. Okay. So let's try to figure out, are the lone pairs localized or delocalized? So if you want to pause the video and try this on your own first, you can. And when you unpause the video, we'll go over it together. Okay, so let's draw this a little bit differently. Um, so let's draw, oh, what's the best way to do this? Let's see. So I'm just going to draw a nitrogen there, carbon, carbon, uh, nitrogen. Okay. Oh. And that should be a carbon on the end there. All right, so the carbons in the ring are all sp2 hybridized. So they do each have a, a p orbital above and below. What about the nitrogens? So the nitrogen on the bottom there has three uh bonds or three um a, a steric number of three excuse me so it's bonded to two carbons and it has a lone pair so it has a p uh, orbital it also has an sp2 orbital kind of coming off of it as well so what about the nitrogen up above So that's a little bit of a question mark, right? Because it has a bond to two carbons, a hydrogen, and then it has a lone pair. So it kind of looks like it's sp3, but is that lone pair in a p orbital? Or is it in an sp2 orbital? It's in a p orbital. So that nitrogen is sp2 hybridized, so we can delocalize those electrons into the ring. So that means its lone pair is in a p orbital, and then the hydrogen it's bonded to is bonding with the sp2 orbital. Now the nitrogen down below is already forming a double bond with the carbon next to it. So that must mean its lone pair is in the sp2 orbital, just kind of hanging out there. Okay, so 
that means we can only count one of the nitrogen's lone pairs as pi electrons. So the nitrogen on the top, its lone pair can delocalize. It's in a p orbital. But the nitrogen on the bottom, its lone pair is localized. So those are not pi electrons. Okay, so hopefully this helps a little bit um, to kind of understand when you count pi electrons, when you don't, um, or when electrons are pi electrons and when they're not pi electrons. Additionally, you will have some questions like this on your pod, and it can get kind of confusing sometimes, right? So use these examples to help you on the pod. Um, but if you do get confused, you can always email me um, or set up an office hour. Okay, so let's figure out, is histidine an aromatic compound? So how many pi electrons do we have? Well, we've got two, four, six. Great, so that follows Huckel's rule. It's also a cyclic molecule. It is planar. And it has a conjugated pi system. Okay, so we'll stop the video there. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about reactions at the benzylic position. So that's one carbon away from benzene. So uh, we'll talk about that next time.